everyone, it's Jessica, the Fitterina Ballerina, and today I wanted to do just a really quick um, story time and talk about my, uh, how I came to be a ballerina and how I got started in dance and um, eventually retired and became um, a dance teacher and studio owner. So a little backstory on on me, I was raised in a super conservative uh, Catholic family. Um, my dad was the owner of a Knights of Columbus um, insurance agency, and my mom has always been a stay-at-home mom and uh, an artist, so she paints and draws and makes crafts she's very artsy so i get i get my artsy side from my mom and my analytical business side uh, from my dad so i'm a good mix of both um and when i was growing up uh, my sister and i we <laughs> we were i mean we were girly you know we um we didn't necessarily have a an athletic um, nature, I guess you could say. Um, so, but my dad wanted us to um, to play sports in hopes that maybe we would get a a scholarship um, when it was time to go to college. So, we I know I did. I don't know about my sister, but my dad put me in quite a few sports <laughs> when I was when I was younger, um, and I remember the first sport that I tried was softball, and it was kind of a disaster, and I wouldn't necessarily say I hated, I hated it, but I just wasn't good at it. Um, I remember they put me um, way out in the outfield, and um, instead of, you know, paying attention to what was happening, I was just kind of out there like, picking the little dandelions and smelling them and, uh, you know, that wasn't necessarily my job. Um, and I was the only, uh, I was the only girl that they would bring out, well maybe, I, I think there was maybe two others, um, but everybody else could actually hit the ball. Um, but for me, they had to bring out, you know, the tee and put the ball on top and I would go to hit and I would hit, <laughs> I would hit the tee and the ball would fall right on the floor, uh, right there in front of me. So kind of a disaster. Um, so clearly I wasn't a softball player. Um, the next sport that my uh, parents had me try out was, um, was soccer. And I can say I hated soccer. <laughs> that one was not fun. Um, and uh, my mom, to this day, my mom still makes fun of me and she says, yeah, Jessica played soccer and she had this little prissy run and it was like this, you know, and she would run across the field. Um, and I do remember that. And, you know, all of the kids, if the ball was going that way, I'd be like, do, 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 do. I'm just gonna run over here and hang out, you know, by more dandelions. <laughs> so one day my mom, she decided, uh, you know, maybe it's time to find something a little more, a little more girly uh, for, for Jessica. She seems to be, you know, she doesn't seem to be very athletic. So, um, so she did, she, she signed me up for, uh, for my first dance classes. And, you know, I was a child that was really, really shy. And um, as an adult, I'm not as I'm not as shy anymore. I'm very introverted until I kind of get to know you, and then I come out of my shell a little bit. But as um, as a child, I, I remember being really shy, and I was always a perfectionist. And so doing things where um, maybe you know, like dance, it was brand new. I've never danced before. You know, besides like playing music in the house and like just moving, I didn't realize that there was this whole world of like you have to learn it, and it's you know, a technique and a skill and all of these things. Um, so when I went to my first dance class, I actually didn't participate at all. I just kind of sat in the corner and watched because I was afraid of, you know, what are they gonna think of me? Am I gonna mess up? Am I gonna fall? You know, I had all of these fears um, about trying dance. So 
you know, I didn't, I didn't participate <laughs> in my first dance class. And my, and the dance teacher was a saint, you know, because, um, she wasn't like pushy. She wasn't like, you have to do this. You have to try. Like, I think she kind of understood that, you know, I was a little timid and I was a little, you know, I didn't want to go out there and, um, and embarrass myself. You know, the teacher comes down, she explains to my mom, well, mom, she didn't really participate. She just kind of sat and watched. Um, you know, I don't really know if, uh, if it's going to be a good fit for her or not. Uh, you're more than welcome to keep trying until she does participate. My mom was just like, O-M-G, she didn't even try dance. Like, my child has to be talented at something. You know, I think they were seriously starting to get concerned that, that, we, that we just weren't good at anything. Um, so, and I mean, I hadn't tried it, so nobody could really say it was a lack of talent at that point. It was just, um, I, I hadn't really gauged an interest for it yet, and I was still kind of feeling feeling the waters a little bit. At this point in, in my life, I was about seven or eight. So, um, so my mom said, well, what if, so she kind of talked to me a little bit. She said, you know, just has something that you think that you would want to try. And I said, you know, I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to do, I just don't want to dance in front of all of those kids because I'm afraid of messing up or falling or, you know, I don't know what to do. So the teacher she just sort of recommended to me and my mom that we start with a private lesson. Um, you know, just to kind of break the ice a little bit uh, before I went into a full, into a full-blown class. So, and then that way she could work on me one-on-one, -on -one, make sure I was super comfortable, um, you know, with the class and, and all of that stuff. So, um, so we did that. And so I show up for my private lesson, my private dance lesson. And the teacher, you know, she's wonderful. And she just said, you know, I'm gonna dance with you and just follow along. And if you have any questions or if you're confused about something or if you need me to break something down, just let me know. Um, so we did, I did that. Um, so we started with like a warm up, and I remember it being more like a, just like a jazz class. It wasn't like a ballet class. So we just started with warm ups, you know, head, shoulders, you know, stuff like that. And that part was okay. It wasn't really, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I love warming up. Um, so that part was just, you know, whatever, I was following along. But then we got into, into stretching. And um, all of a sudden, you know, we're doing like butterfly stretch and then maybe some hamstring stretches and then we go into the splits. And the, the teacher looks at my mom and she looks at me and just goes, O-M-G, <laughs> you are so flexible. Um, because I was, I just, I, it felt I had no joints or something. I don't know. I could just contort myself into all of these crazy positions. And then we moved on to my feet. And that was a whole other like, oh my gosh, you have, they called it banana feet. You have these crazy banana feet, you know, and they just, and uh, yeah, I mean, so she was, she just made me feel really good about myself and like, I might actually be good at something. <laughs> I might actually have um, an opportunity to be a dancer and learn how to dance and be good at dance. So um, I left the private feeling really good. So we signed up for dance and this was, this dance studio was um, a competition school. So they had, they offered a little bit of everything. And yeah, so I just signed up for a jazz class. Um, after that first year of dance, uh, I decided I enjoyed it and I wanted to try maybe some other things. Um, and about that time, uh, the studio um, got a new ballet teacher and she came in from San Francisco Ballet. And so she was really talented. She, I, I signed up for her ballet class and I think I actually signed up for two ballet classes um, or she had me perform with two ballet classes that year. I can't really remember what the deal was with that. Um, but I, I did uh, her ballet class and she came to my mom and she said, you know, she said this, I, I'm not going to be here forever. And she said, but if I can, if I can make my impact on this dance studio, it's going to be with you and your daughter. And she said, 
you need to find her a ballet, a school that's focused on ballet, a ballet studio. She said, this is not it. If you know, she has so much potential to be a ballerina. So you have got to get her out of this environment and in a place that is ballet focused. So we said, okay, we'll start looking. Um, and in that time we started doing private lessons. Um, um, we stuck with privates and eventually, um, Miss Marina put me in point shoes and <laughs> that was like, that was like the moment when I got my first pair of point shoes that I was like, I want to be a ballerina. This is so cool. And I remember going uh, to my point shoe fitting and I just had this idea that my point shoes had to be pink. They had to be bright, obnoxious, like <laughs> pink which nowadays I would just die if I had bright pink shoes on my feet. And so I did point and, you know, started building up my strength. Um, so once, uh, once Miss Marina left, um, you know, we had moved. Um, our family had moved to Broomfield. And so, you know, this, uh, this particular dance school was in Thornton. So you're like, you know, it's, it's probably time to move on um, from this dance school and I missed Marina, you know, she was my first ballet teacher and I think you always have a connection with your first ballet teacher. So um, we moved uh, to Broomfield and I remember we got this, um, my mom had been researching um, ballet studios and we got in the mail this beautiful brochure, I remember it, I'm sure I have it still in a um, in a scrapbook somewhere, but it was a beautiful brochure. And on the cover was this girl in her tutu and her point shoes, and she was doing a little susu and this little, um, this little like three-year-old underneath, like <sighs> watching her like that. Um, and the cutest picture, and then the brochure, like all of the pictures of the girls working in class, and they did nutcracker and all of these things. Um, and I just looked at my mom and said, Mom, I wanna dance there. Um, and it, luckily it was in Broomfield, so, um, back then it was called Youth Ballet Colorado. And so, uh, like, the next day I was registered and in class, and I remember, um, I was so excited to be in a real ballet studio. Um, and, but, you know, because I didn't have, I didn't have a great, um, start to my training, you know, because I did all of the jazz and the lyrical and stuff like that. So I wasn't focused on ballet at my old studio. So, you know, they had they had some work <laughs> to do uh, to get me caught up. Um, and so they, they put me in a couple ballet classes and then they said, you know, and we want you to perform in Nutcracker. So my first Nutcracker, I um, was party girl and, uh, and a flower. So, um, so the next year at uh, the studio is called uh, YBC Youth Ballet Colorado. And so the next year I got into more classes because I, I was really starting to love the performing. Um, and so I took as many classes as I could. Um, I became a, a studio company member. Um, so they had a ballet company and I was a member in that. I think at that point I was a core member. They had the different levels for the school. Um, and uh, the next year, in Nutcracker was super exciting because I got my first solo in the Nutcracker. I, I got to perform the Harlequinade doll, which was very cool. Um, and my favorite thing about it was it really showed off my flexibility. Um, so I had this hula hoop and I would do like, you know, put my foot in the hula hoop and touch it to the front of my head and do tilts and all of these fun things with my hula hoop. And it was a really, it was a really fun, um, a fun first solo and it was really good, um, for me. And, uh, yeah, that was my first Nutcracker solo. So by that point I was really into ballet and I was really loving, um, you know, performing and doing the Nutcracker. So after that second year, I was like, next year, I want to be Clara in the Nutcracker. So I asked my mom um, if I could do the summer intensive and uh, she did, she signed me up for that. And then um, I also asked my, my mom if I could sign up for other classes. 
Um, so I was basically dancing from sunup till sundown, um, and I was taking classes with kids that were five years younger than me, you know, just to get beginning ballet training in, and I was a workhorse because I had, I mean, I had the blinders on. I am gonna be Clara <laughs> in The Nutcracker. I, I was a very blessed child. Um, my, my parents had built in our home my very own private ballet studio. Um, you know, I was very lucky, very blessed. And, but she was also on top of all of the hours of dancing I was doing at the studio. She was also coming to my house on the weekends and teaching me private lessons in my ballet studio. And she was talking to me and my mom and she kind of said, and I remember this being a really emotional conversation. She just looked at us, she said, you know, um, I've given this studio all that I can. Um, and it's just, I can tell it's time for me to move on. And she said, but the last thing that I want to do before I leave is make Jessica, Clara and the Nutcracker. And I mean, I was so, <laughs> excited and honored and scared and like oh my gosh this is really happening this is like my dream come true to be Clara and the Nutcracker so and I remember I cried because I remember I would just pray I would lock myself in the bathroom and just pray for hours like please can I please be Clara and the Nutcracker um you know like I was so I don't know what it would have happened if I wouldn't have been cast as Claire in the Nutcracker. I really, I don't think I could have survived <laughs> that disappointment. It would have been the greatest disappointment of my life. So I was very, um, I was very blessed to have been cast as Clara. So I performed Claire in the Nutcracker. That was 1998. <laughs> It was about at that time that I was so that you know I was so serious in ballet. I did their spring show, um, and then I kind of talked to my mom and I said, you know, um, my favorite ballet director she left, and you know I just kind of feel like I've I've plateaued. I'm not gonna get any better than I am now. So what are what are our next steps? What's my where can I go from here? So that's when we decided to go to the Academy of Colorado Ballet. Academy of Colorado Ballet was the next place that I went. And um, so I went from being the big fish in a little pond to a really tiny fish in this huge pond. Um, and uh, I remember I had to do an audition uh, to get in like a placement where, where, where are you gonna be placed? Um, and I don't, I don't think I ever had a Vaganova teacher at YBC. So it was sort of a it was sort of a new realm, very strict, you know, much stricter than um, my last classes. Very serious um, training, and uh, so because I had never been trained for Ghana, they placed me a year lower. Um, so I was um, in a class with girls that were a couple years younger than me, and I was okay with it because you know I'm like I just want good training and I just want to be better. So if that means I have to be in a class with kids younger than me. I'm fine with it. Um, so after dancing at Colorado Ballet um, a year or two, um, I, I decided, I, I talked with my mom and I said, Mom, is there any way that I could, you know, stop going to school? Um, there were a couple kids at my high school that were, um, that were just bullies. I was going to a Catholic high school and for some reason, those kids were vicious, um, and so I just I didn't want to I didn't want to continue going um, to school. And I said, "Can I just be homeschooled and do ballet? That's all I want to do is be homeschooled and do ballet." And so my mom said, "Okay, sure, we'll homeschool you." So I pulled out of high school um, to focus on ballet and be homeschooled. So um, this is when this is when the story gets a little. It gets a little uh, dark, um, and uh, and so I'm gonna proceed this part of the story with um, with this. If you have ever suffered with um, body image issues, um, eating issues, anorexia, bulimia, anything like that, um, this part of the story may trigger something in you, and so I am going to suggest that you skip ahead and I will put up in this little corner um, where you can skip ahead to. As soon as I dropped out of high school, uh, and I shouldn't say dropped out, but as soon as I decided to be homeschooled, um, 
I threw myself into ballet and I took private lessons. I mean, my parents probably paid a fortune on my ballet education. Um, so, you know, private lessons. I went all the time. I danced anywhere I could, took all the classes I could, um, and just threw myself into it. And I remember me being, I was, I was a couple years older than the girls in my classes. And I remember my body starting to change, you know, like I started developing breasts and a butt and things like that. And, you know, adding curves where normally I wouldn't have them and I didn't want them. Well, I, I started not liking how I looked compared to the other girls. And so this is when I started my food restricting. And so I, um, started really focused on counting calories. So I, I was uh, counting calories and I was um, restricting a lot of what I ate. Um, I remember I wanted to become a vegetarian, so I cut out meat and my diet basically consisted of, this is a very bizarre diet, rice cakes, carrots, grapes, cheese, um, and ice cream. That is not a good diet, and I would not recommend it for anybody. <laughs> um, so that was sort of my diet. Um, but you know, I noticed when I was on my diet that I started losing weight, and I started looking more like the other girls, and I was getting more attention and things like that. Um, I got so small, so thin, that I stopped menstruating, um, which is usually the first sign that your body is in starvation mode, um, which isn't a good mode to be in. So. I got really, really thin, really skinny. Um, and probably the worst of it was when I competed at the American Youth American Grand Prix. Um, they came through uh, Denver on a tour. And I performed White Swan variation. And I just remember all I ate, I cut up an apple. And then I had some crackers, or not crackers, uh, carrots. And I had one slice of apple and two carrots for breakfast. One slice of apple, two carrots for lunch. One slice of apple, two carrots for a snack. And one slice of apple and carrots for dinner. And that's what I ate to get through the competition. Um, I did pretty well at the competition. I mean, I, I got an honorable mention and I qualified for New York. At this point, um, at this point, I was so burned out. <laughs> I had been dancing so much. And, um, you know, it, my mom, at, you know, we sat and we talked and she said, do you want to go to New York? Do you want to do the competition? I was, and I just kind of felt like, you know, the girl that won is probably going to win in New York. So why? I just didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like going. Um, so I was the only girl from my class that didn't go to New York. And I think it reflected uh, negatively on me um, and my my ballet teacher because when everybody came back, um, I, 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 was, I was treated um, a little bit differently. So, you know, so the vibe changed. As soon as that competition happened and everybody came back and that was sort of the beginning of the end. So, um, so at this point, I started getting depressed and so my anorexia started becoming uh, bulimia um, so I remember I had really bizarre behaviors at this time and it blows my mind that my parents had no idea that this was going on um, because I remember they would go to the store and they would buy you know cookies and chocolate and chips and all of this crap that you shouldn't be eating and I remember going into I would spend um, I would spend hours, like a full day in the pantry, rearranging the pantry and hiding the food that I didn't want to eat. Like I was, I was stuffing cookies in the dog food bag. Like it was bizarre behavior. Um, I also remember I had my, my skinny scrapbook, I called it, which um, I, I would just obsess. I would go through all of the women's magazines and just find all the pictures of the actresses and models that had like the bones, um, you know, here and just like veins and like really skin arms and things like that. And 
and I would just put them in my skinny scrapbook, I called it. Um, and then instead of doing schoolwork, I spent my days that I wasn't dancing, uh, just watching ballet. Just every, I, I own so many ballet videos and movies, and I just remember I'd have my five grapes, and I'd have my five little cubes of cheese, and just watching ballet all day. That's what I did. Um, and uh, it was about this time when I started rearranging the pantries and keeping my skinny diary and all of this stuff that um, I, I started losing control a little bit of my um, of my eating habits. And so anytime I would eat something that wasn't on my diet, um, I, I started self-hurting. Um, and anytime I ate something or over ate or ate too much or ate something that I shouldn't be eating, I would scratch myself. And then when I would go to ballet, I would sweat and it would get in those scratches and it would burn. And that was like my punishment. Like you just ate all that food. You're fat, you're ugly, you're gross. Like this is your punishment for not being motivated or dedicated enough or whatever. Um, and then when people ask me about it, I just say, oh, the cat scratched me. Which anyway, so, um, so this was the time when I started also abusing laxatives really bad. Um, it was really bad. Um, and you know, when, and I wasn't just taking like one or two, I was taking like a whole sleeve. Um, and even just taking half of one, you know, it, it makes you go, you go to the bathroom. Um, but when you take a whole sleeve, I was miserable. I was bloated. I was cramping. I, I was having like my heart would burn, you know, heartburn, um, and it almost felt like it skipped a beat sometimes. And so then I just stopped going to dance. Um, so it was about this time that Nutcracker auditions were coming around, and this year we were all up for snow, lots of the snow, snowflakes. And I was really excited because this would be my big chance to dance with the company, be a snowflake, you know, and ne the next step is an apprentice or a studio company member in the company. Um, so I was really excited for the audition. I was practicing really hard. And uh, and I just remember the cast list coming up and I was not cast. And so we asked um, one of the ballet mistresses there and she just said, you know, we all feel that, you know, your weight is an issue and that you should probably um, look into losing about 10 pounds before we can cast you in something like lots of the snowflakes. Um, and it just crushed my heart. So I decided I didn't want to dance anymore. <laughs> so I quit, um, quit dance altogether, just like that. Um, graduated high school, got jobs, did the real life thing. And I did that for about seven years. Uh, well, probably five years, I think. Um, didn't dance at all. And so, um, luckily, that's not where the story ends though. So now the story gets happy again. So um, after I quit ballet, got my job, um, became an adult, uh, started work, I, I eventually got fired from my job at Dish Network. Uh, and at this point I was like, you know, I really miss dancing. And I was petrified of ballet because I hadn't done it in like five years. So I was like, you know, I am gonna audition for a musical. Ta-da! So I did. And I auditioned for a musical called Kiss Me Kate. And it was, um, it was a lot of fun. And it got me kind of in shape. And at this point I also started teaching uh, ballet, teaching dance. Um, and I taught at a ballet school that had, they did performances. And the lady at the ballet school was like, you have so much potential. I would really, really love it if you performed in our shows. And I was like, I haven't done ballet in so long. I don't think I can. Um, so I remember starting out just, she did a little, um, I think it was Lake Corsair, like a core piece. And I was in the back. It wasn't even on point. It was super simple. Um, just to kind of start getting into the shape again. Um, and I started taking ballet class and stuff. Um, and um, 
So that year, I performed in my first Nutcracker since quitting. I want to do an Arabian Pop, and I want to do Snow Queen. So those were very ambitious uh, for a first time back um, after having quit for five years, but I performed them, I did them. Um, not my best performances by any means, but it got me a little bit closer um, to in shape um, to perform again. And so I started researching and I found a little local ballet company called uh, named Ballet Ariel. And Ballet Ariel is where I decided to um, like this looks promising. I'm gonna I'm gonna call them up. I'm gonna audition. And so I remember you know just kind of explaining. I haven't danced in a long time. Um, you know like I'm coming back from a five year break and I you know I'm not 100 percent. I'm not really strong. But um, you know your company looks like it would be a good place for me to start back up. And they were like, yeah, just come audition. So I went and I did the audition, and they asked me to join the company, which was pretty cool. Um, so I started that spring. Um, so this was halfway through their season. And, uh, you know, she they do a lot of um, original work. So the ballet they were doing was a female um, cast of Caesar, and it was called Echelons. And I played Mark Ant Antony in that, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, so that was my first uh, performance back as um, as a professional ballerina. And from there, I <clears throat> excuse me, I enjoyed dancing there for uh, seven seasons uh, before retiring. Um, a couple years ago, I retired. I think three years ago um, from the company. And, you know, it was a really wonderful, um, it was a really wonderful experience to get to, you know, finally fulfill my ballet career that, um, you know, I left uh, when I was 18. So, um, and I got to perform a lot of really fun things. I, you know, lots of stuff in the Nutcracker, Arabian, um, I was Dewdrop. Uh, Chinese, lots of solos, friends, and Capelia. Um, what else did we do there? I'm trying to remember all of all of the years. Lots of original pieces. Um, like I was one of Elvis's girlfriends when we did the Birth of Rock and Roll. Um, so lots of really fun roles. And I'm hoping I'm you know I'm trying to get my schedule worked out so that maybe I can perform. Uh, with ballet Ariel this year in their Nutcracker. So I'm trying to get back into ballet shape for that. So, um, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. But yeah, that is my uh, how I came to be a ballerina story and, um, you know, the story of how I trained and, you know, um, and I guess I just want to end this video with uh, don't be too hard on yourself. It's just ballet. Um, stay healthy you know, stay strong. Um, if you do ever feel like you're struggling with uh, body weight or image or, you know, food restricting or anything like that, please seek help. Um, it's not worth throwing your career away. Um, and uh, enjoy life. You know, spend your, spend your days being a teenager and enjoying school and enjoying friends and ballet. It does not need to be a full-time job when you're a teenager. Um, it can be a full-time job when you're an adult. So enjoy your teenage years, enjoy training, enjoy the journey, and um, I will see you guys next time for another video. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked this one. Leave me a comment. Let me know about your journey. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you'd like to hear any more stories about, uh, about ballet. All right, thanks you guys. I'll see you next time.